the Lord and, and just worship Him in the way the Holy Spirit uh, lays on your heart. And I'm so thankful. And I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful for this that we can come and we can worship the Lord. It's so important to worship the Lord. Every day, each one of us is going to go through some type of battle. It might be battles plural, it might be battles singular, or it might be alone, and, 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 and whatever. But we need Jesus each step of the way. Amen. We need Jesus for everything. So this morning I want to talk a little bit and then about what comes from the Lord. I'm going to be coming from Psalms 127, verses 1 through 5, and it reads accordingly. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman walketh but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. Lo, children are the heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of thy youth. Happy is a man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. What comes from the Lord? What God will do if we will respond to Him? If God is left out of whatever one pursues, then it will not be successful. And I'm talking about the total of something being successful. You can have a lot of money and still be in misery. You can have no money and still be in misery. It's everything that you do for God that you allow God to do in your life. I want each one of us to remember, and we need to keep this in mind, of what God builds. Keep this in mind, what God builds, He holds up. I've said this to so many young people. When God opens the door, He will keep it open for you. When you open the door, you have to keep that door open. And while you're keeping that door open, you're never going to go through the next door. Because you're so busy keeping that one door open. But when God opens the door, He will keep it open for you. And in turn, that allows you to go through another door that God has opened. And that's very important for us today. Not only as a church, but as believers as well. We want a view this morning of what comes from the Lord. And verse 1, I love it. And I was thinking about Psalm 123, or Psalm 23, I'm sorry, this morning. And I was thinking the last verse of that, and they shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. And that's what we want to do. Amen. We want to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. In order to dwell in the house of the Lord forever, first of all, we must believe in the Lord. We must believe in His Word. We must believe in what He says and what not others say. I want to know what God says. I want to do what God says. I want God to build. I want God to build me and I have His life. And He has been with us for over 40 some years. I remember when we first got married. I remember this. We was going to a small Baptist church down in Metairie in Jefferson Parish in Louisiana. And uh, I know, and I'm not going to say too much about so much, but she is Christian as a Christian as a little baby. And her mother was a strict one. And when Inez married me, well, she became a what? I pray that she became a Christian. But it was, it was a hard thing for her mother. But her mother overcame and we prayed for her and, and she accepted the will of the Lord and we, she, she died here when we, uh, uh, the, the second month that we were here. But she accepted Jesus Christ. So I would say that's all that matters. But the Lord builds, and He built our marriage. Our marriage wasn't perfect, but she loved the Lord, and she told me something way back in 1975. And I just got off of work. We worked hard, and I got home. And she said, sit down, Daryl. 
I got something I want to tell you. The greatest time of my life when she told me this. I found a man I love more than you. And that man was Jesus Christ. And I said, I got the world by the table. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. When somebody says they love Jesus more than you, you got more love than you can have. Amen. 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 Praise God. But the Lord builds. And I want the Lord to build in each one of your lives. And this is so important today. Is that the Lord will build your life. And whatever you might be going through, keep in mind, God is in control. Amen. God is in control. The Lord builds a house. Well, let's talk about that, for example. We all need protection from the elements of nature, amen, when it's hot, when it's cold, when it's raining, or whenever it's doing whatever. We need a place to come in from protection from the elements. We need a place to come in when we worship our Lord on a Sunday morning. Amen? And, and I pray that this is just not a physical address, but rather this is a place where Jesus is. Amen. This is the place where the Holy Spirit is. This is the place when you walk in. You're not walking into a building. You're walking into the presence of God. Amen. And that means so much to me. Amen? I want, I want to walk in a place where God is present. I can go into a movie theater. And I don't go very often. In fact, I don't go very often at all. We watched a good movie last night, me and Aunt Ed and all of them. And it was called The, uh, the War Room. And it, it was a good movie. But if I want to be with people, I can go to other places to be with people. I, want, I just don't want to be in a mass of people. I want to be where God is. Amen. I want to be touched by God because I need it. I need it. But we all need protection from elements. Amen. Well, Autumn said, I believe if I, I, I don't want to quote her wrong, but she said when she touched down, I think it was one degree uh, temperature in Canada, wherever that was at. Amen. But I'll tell you what, you don't want to hold a worship service under some frozen tree out there in the elements. You want to be able to come into a place where it's warm enough to where you can worship the Lord. Amen. 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 I'd hate to try to be in here uh, outside worshiping the Lord in the middle of a hailstorm. You know, we might just get a little sense knocked into us. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. But anyway, I can use a little sense knocked into me too. And the Holy Spirit does it in a soft, gentle way. Yes. Amen? But we all need protection. We all need a house. I remember when I was in the army in Germany, not only was it, did I need protection, but we had a tent. And let me tell you, when in the middle of the winter on top of those mountains, in the middle of a forest, it was good to have that tent to come into because we had uh, 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 diesel oil heaters in there. Amen? So we do need protection from the elements, and that's the way God made us. God made us that way. We need, we need protection to come out the storm. And, and there are many storms in our lives. But what did Jesus do with the storm? He quieted it. Jesus had Jesus is over everything. Jesus is over nature. Jesus is over everything. Jesus is over our lives when we give our lives to Him. Now wait a minute. I don't want somebody to say, "Well, Brother Gerald, I've accepted the Lord and I've been baptized and Amen and Amen." That's a big Amen and Amen. But God wants that in your life. But God wants you to be totally surrendered to Him. Yes. Why? Why? Not because He can be dominant over you. He should be already. But He wants to in order to protect you from the storms of life. Amen. There's a big difference. A lot of people wants, want you to submit to their authority for whatever reason. God wants you to submit to His authority because He can take care of you. And when, no matter what you're going through, God is going to see you through. Can y'all say amen on that? Amen. And that's very important. No matter what, God is going to see you through. God is going to see you through and bring you through. A storm can be violent. I know some of y'all were from down south. Me and Inez, um, uh, well, she was born down there. I got, I, I, Dad and Mom moved there when I was about nine years old. But there was a lot of hurricanes. And, and that wind, and that, it, it, it can stain. Actually, the wind blowing the rain, it, it can stain your face. But we've been through a lot of those hurricanes. Man, did we have been. I, we've been through some hurricanes. Hallelujah. But a, a storm can be violent. It can, it can be a state of noisy confusion. I remember when Betsy went through. Just got out the military. Just, just got out the military. 
And, and Betsy came through and that light was knocked out for about seven or ten days. It was just a total confusion back in those days. But God is still in control. God is in control of everything. There's a reason and a purpose for everything. Amen? There's a reason and there's a purpose for everything. Amen. Now when we turn, you know, the Satan can be jumping on you. Satan, yeah, Satan jumps on you, by the way. He jumps on you any kind of way that he possibly can. Him and his little demon. They want to jump on you and keep you confused. They want to break your heart. They want you to think you're lost. But I'm here to share this. Satan does not have power and authority over God. Amen. God has power and authority over Satan. Yes. Now let me go on further with this as the Holy Spirit is leading. I'm talking to somebody this morning. It might be me, it might be you. But the Bible says this, greater is he, who is he? Christ. That is in you than he is of the world. Now who is he of the world? Yeah. So if greater is God, greater is the Holy Spirit that is in you, then that means you have power and authority over Satan and the demons, but we have to be under, come on now, come on. We have to be under the authority of Jesus Christ in order to have authority over the devil and the demons. Amen. Amen. Come on, come on. Amen. Now when you feel like the devil is coming in, maybe family argument, or, or whatever, when you feel like Satan is coming in, this is not a blank check now. I'm not giving y'all a blank check to write whatever you want on that check and live like the devil and go ahead and catch it and have all the blessings of God. But when the devil starts trying to get in, when the little demon starts trying to get in, greater is he that is in you than he is of the world, I'm here to tell you something right now by the power and the authority of Jesus Christ. You have authority over that devil. You have authority over those demons. And start telling those demons to go into the dry places in the name of Jesus Christ and they got to flee. Right but don't walk out the building and pick them back up. Y'all with me on that? Amen. But we need a place of protection. Amen. We need a place of protection. We need a, a place of protection for our children. Amen. You know, I've got to be careful what I say. <clears throat> children need the Word of God, the pure Word of God. Mm -hmm. They need the pure Word of God. Amen. Games are fine. They fine, but kids need more than games. They need the word of God. Because Satan is going to try to jump on them too. You gotta know that. They need the word of God too. They have little minds, but those minds are sharp. Those minds are like a sponge, like a big sponge. I used to have a sponge like that to wash my. My truck and my car. I don't do that anymore. No Ooh, that's a lot of work. Amen. Five dollars they go to the car wash anyway. But back then I didn't have five dollars. I didn't have a car neither. But, but it's like a big sponge. It just wants to suck up all the water. Their little minds, their little minds are sharp. And they absorb it what is being said. Can I have an amen on that? Amen. They need the word of God. We need the word of God. How many here can remember when you was a kid? Mm -hmm. Y'all can? <laughs> I think Noah was still building his boat back there. <laughs> but I can remember as a kid. I can remember. Yes, kids have problems too. They need Jesus too. The Lord builds whatever you need. The Lord builds it. But then, the Lord guards it. Amen? Amen? The enemy wants to destroy. The enemy wants to bring each believer to ruin. How many here has ever felt like something is just trying to knock you down and keep you down? Mm -hmm. It won't let you up. Mm -hmm. That they just, just keeps on holding you down. Amen. That's what the enemy wants to do. 
But when you start feeling that, you know what you need to do? Praise God because the enemy thinks you're worthy enough because the enemy is afraid of you. Start praising God because the enemy wants to knock you down, but God wants to lift you up. Amen. So who are we going to listen to? Are we going to listen to that old, uh, well, the Bible says uh, that he's beautiful and Lucifer was beautiful in heaven. And, but he wanted to be like God. And God's not going to put up with that. But here comes the kicker though. You know, here comes the kicker. Not only was the uh, Lucifer kicked out of heaven, he was beautiful. He, he, he was a beautiful angel. Had multi-talent. Uh, musician, uh, music leader. I mean, he was just beautiful. But here comes the kicker. He wanted to be equal to God. He wanted the angels to worship him. And God kicked him out. But here comes the kicker. A third of the angels went out with him. Now I can't figure that out. How in the world can they be in the presence of God, a holy, righteous God, and yet follow someone who is opposite of God? Well, that's a mystery that will be revealed in time if I ever need to know it. I know this. I'm not going to put a half a tank of gas in my car and a half a tank of water in my car and expect to go to New Orleans. That won't work now, will it? So I'm not going to allow the Word of God to be saturated with the untruth. Amen. I want to read the Word of God. Because the more that I read the Word of God, the more I'm going to know about God. And when somebody comes in and tries to water down the Word of God or to add to the Word of God, I've been in the Word of God. I've been in the Word of God. And I know what God's Word says, not because of what somebody says, but because I have read the Word of God. And the Word of God is saturated into my mind. So when someone comes in and tries to bring something else to water down the Word of God, I know what the Word of God says. And this is what I say. I don't want to hear you. You're not going to infiltrate my mind. My mind's going to be filled with the Word of God because it's only the Word of God that's going to bring me through. I don't need to hear all this other stuff. I want to hear what God's Word says because I need victory in my everyday living. Can I have wrong? Oh. See, we couldn't write through the red tape now, right? But the enemy wants to knock us down. But I want to share this with you. The Lord is always on watch for you. When you allow Him to build His house, He is the one that's going to protect His house because He's got an investment in that house. How many here has accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? How many here has went to the cross and allowed the blood of Jesus Christ to save you? And if that is the case, he has built his house in you and he is going to protect his house that he built. Don't that stand the reason? Amen. That's some good words for us this morning. Yes. God is going to protect what he builds. The, day, the, the Satan and his little demons, I think of them like um, what those little things that flies at the east of lumber? Termites. 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 All right, we got a big old beautiful house here. Okay? Beautiful. I'm going to get over here where y'all can see it. Y'all see the house, the roof? Mm -hmm. Boy, that's a beautiful house. But here comes Satan and his little demons. We call them termites. And they're down under, and they're starting to chew, eat the foundation that's holding the house up. Outside looks good. Just put a fresh coat of paint on it. We just change the faucet in the kitchen. I mean, it's got a new bathtub. Everything looks good. Smells good. And they just annoy it. Pretty soon, guess what's going to happen? It don't make no difference if you just paint it because the roof is coming down. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And don't make no difference what kind of faucet you got. It don't make no difference what kind of bathtub will be got. Because the ceiling is falling down and filling up that bathtub. And you don't want to be in that bathtub as the ceiling is falling down and hitting the bathtub. Because if you're in it, you're going to have a headache pretty quick. Amen. Yeah. All right. Here's right. the antidote to all that. We call Arkin. Arkin, come quick. 
Well, maybe it's too late. I don't know. But I'm sharing this with you. When you let God build your house, when you let God build your spiritual house, no matter what Satan tries to do, God is guarding that house. God is giving the protection of that house. Amen. And those termites have got to go back somewhere else. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. No, I don't send them to my neighbor's house. I send them to the dry places to bug the demons that's already there. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm talking some stuff. I mean, I'm talking some spiritual warfare here now. I'm, I'm sharing how we can be victorious in a world that's full of trouble. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm sharing with you how to be victorious when Satan is trying to just tear you up and throw you down. I'm sharing with you victory. You know, victory. I have victory. I have victory, but I have to let God build my house. Amen. I'm talking about my house. Mm -hmm. I gotta let God build this house. Amen. God's gotta build this house. Mm -hmm. Because when people come in, hallelujah, pray to God. When people come in, they gotta know that God is here. Amen. Amen. They gotta know that there's something here. Amen. And what is here is not it's not our music, not our programs, but it's all important. But what is here is the presence of God. And when the presence of God is here, everything else will take its place. Amen. But we've got to have the presence of God. We've got to worship God. We've got to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. We've got to breathe God. We've got to breathe in God. We've got to breathe out self. We've got to breathe in God. God has got to be here. All else will pass. But the Word of God will stand the test of time. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory. We see here, the Lord builds, the Lord goes, the Lord supplies. What good is a house that's being ate up with termites with no water or electricity to it? I know what it's like to be without electricity. Without electricity, if you go into a dark bathroom and you turn a switch on and nothing comes on, you better have a candle or you will make a mess. What good is a house without electricity or without lights, hot water, etc.? But I want you to know this, the Lord supplies. Amen. How many here can use another portion of the Lord way down? I mean, you know, Somebody said, well, preacher, you're a preacher. You're supposed to be, yeah, I'm supposed to be what? Don't you know I'm a human being just like anybody else? Mm -hmm. Don't you know that, that I have emotions just like everybody else? We all are humans. Say, I'm a human. Mm -hmm. And if you ain't a human, we'll lay your on you, you'll become a human. Amen? Mm -hmm. But we have emotions. The Lord supplies what we need. We all need rest from time to time, don't we? Mm -hmm. I think Wednesday night I was one of the tiredest people that you ever seen. Physically, spiritually, and mentally, I was just tired. Went to prison Tuesday night. And I just don't go there to do that. I go there to, I go there to teach the word. Amen. And the devil don't like it. But I'm so thankful that God gives rest. Yeah. God gives each one of us rest. We all need rest. Yeah. When God gives you rest, you don't have to worry about your enemies. Because God is on the watch in your behalf. We all need strength. Those who wait on the Lord will have their strength renewed. Amen. That's Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31. Wait on the Lord. Amen. God is going to supply each believer with his strength. I say this. Don't get ahead of God. Don't get ahead of God. Many times it seems like all strength is gone. Everything that can go wrong has gone wrong. But praise be to God. He is the one and only one who can renew your strength and to go forward. And my promise, according to the Word of God, you wait on God and you put your faith and trust totally and completely in God and He's going to bring you through. Can I have an amen? amen. amen. And we want to praise God for that. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.